What do I say is black love? Look, just the basics when two black people just really love each other. <laughs> we can just have two black people who just love each other and they display that love and they really counter the myth that black people can't love each other. I don't know, it's just two black people coming together because, like, they have similar experiences. Like, they're, they're going to go through things that no other race can go through. So it's like, it's black love. We understand each other. I mean, I've I never been anything else, so I don't know, like, what other people go through and what they got to deal with. I know, like, we have our own situations that we deal with in this country, you know, and I think that that, I don't know, it creates, like, a, a, a special type of dynamic. Knowing the circumstances that people live in, especially people of color, and all of the opposition that's against them and wanting to have something positive in the like in light of all of that i would consider that black love who taught me about healthy relationships probably my parents they have been married for 30 years i learned a lot from my wife for real, uh, former relationships. Honestly, like I would not be able to be in a relationship with my wife in the way I am if I hadn't dated some of the people that I have. I would say my parents. Um, my mom and dad, like, I mean, they're they're in what you would consider like a untraditional relationship. They have they're not like married, but they've been together for like 35 years. I would say the challenges the challenges that I had occurred early on had taught me so like I was very reflective of what was happening around myself. So my mom was in very abusive relationships um, and my dad wasn't there. So my dad's been incarcerated for over 15 years. And so I think just kind of watching and understanding that's not what I wanted. For me, it was important to go against the grain and try to develop something different that was gonna actually make me happy. I don't feel like anybody taught me about healthy relationships. This was something I had to try to find on my own or with my partner. You know, this is something I'm still learning. People are like, oh, black relationships don't last, or they expect baby mama drama. There's these expectations for black relationships, right? Or these things that they think are just going to happen. If you look at like love and hip hop, and you know all these basketball wives and stuff. To me, they don't really symbolize the real essence of like one black culture or two black relationships. So when you're looking at these shows, they're telling you that it's all about drama. The way society is built, it is not built to reflect us in a healthy way and in a way that empowers us, you know? So if we don't build it ourselves, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen. So if we're looking to somebody else to create it or to show that to us, why would they do that? It's to their own detriment, you know? The Philando situation, I get like choked up even thinking about it right now because it's so frustrating. Um, but like someone had to watch their like person, like the person they care about, like how I feel about him, watching someone murder him would be difficult. So I like, it frustrates me and it scares me to think that like we live something like this. To see like the black family get dismantled in front of, in front of your face was something else. We can read about it, we can hear about it, but to like really see it was something else. This woman could not comfort her man as he was dying. She had to make a choice of like comforting him or getting shot or hurt or killed in front of her baby. And so you had the woman who couldn't comfort her man and he was very defenseless to the mom being arrested and the baby trying to comfort her mom. Like, I think that did some psychological stuff for me. 
as heartbreaking as it was, I feel like the the system was doing what it was designed to do from its inception. The police have been doing this to us for years on camera and nothing's happened, so it wasn't new to me. It's not surprising to me. It's just, it's a thing that happens, you know? And then I felt bad about that, like, because I should feel a type of way about it, but it's like I'm used to it. I cried. I cried a couple of times. Um, in in retrospect, um, because me and my husband just found out that we're pregnant with our first child. So I remember sending a message to Sarita and our friend Judy being like, and if I have a son, right? Like, what? What in the world? Right? So I had a moment of, this cannot be what I should be thinking about as a first time pregnant mom, soon to be mom, that I am trapped in this in between of this is a blessing, it's exciting, this is what we want as a family, and this is not the kind of gift that I want to share with the world, knowing that the world does not reciprocate how I feel about my child as a black child. If, it's, if, if we have a boy, it's crazy to me to think that I'm going to have to have the same conversation that my mom had with me. I'm going to have to have that with my son, like, about how you interact with the police and what you do, you know, and, and that, that, that all police aren't there to help you, you know? Like, that shouldn't be a thing. In 2016, that shouldn't be what we're doing, right? And it sucks. It sucks, man. Like, and it sucks to be thinking about your kid and not have it just be really happy. Sometimes it's difficult because she hasn't had, well, we haven't had the same experiences. So when something like the shooting that just happened takes place, she starts to think about maybe me or her brothers or something like that. And she gets real emotional about it. But I've been through situations where they've raided our house, took us to, to jail, and then dropped us off with no IDs and no phones. I'm in basketball shorts and shoes. That's it. Like, so... That's like normal to me, but it shouldn't be. She hasn't had that, so sometimes we don't see eye to eye in these situations. So for me, I'm more of a, I'm let's we're if they did this, let's go out there and march. Let's you know we're boycotting. We're not going here no more. Um, and he's more laid back and more of a observer. So I think just being able to see that like. I care about these things, you care about these things, how can we kind of meet in the middle? And I think we do a good job of trying to find that happy medium with supporting each other in those things. I'm the person that's like, arrest me. I'm a protest, I'm see how I'm gonna chain myself on the radiator. And he is like, all right, that's cool. But what about, you know, hitting them where it hurts? So his response has always been economic and, and wealth in the black community. So that, while I was being very emotional, his was like, well, what are we going to do about it? Taking care of self is providing um, healthiness into the relationship, really. So if I didn't do that, or if he didn't do that, then our relationship is at risk of not being as strong as it needs to be when we're dealing with these issues. In relationships and in families, like there's gonna be times where you don't like each other, but if you love each other and you love yourself, you're gonna be cool. It's the people who don't do that, they got a problem.